Well, thank you all for joining. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm uh, Steve Williamson. I'm the IHS Billings Area Chief Medical Officer. And today I'm going to be talking about burnout and resiliency. We get bombarded, I think, on a daily basis about uh, burnout and resiliency. And so I'm just going to give a very brief overview and um, some recommendations on trying to mitigate and prevent and alleviate burnout and then as well as um, talking a little bit about resiliency and building resiliency and then just share a little bit of my own um, um, personal experience with uh, burnout and resiliency as well. So go ahead and go to the next slide please. So of course, the realities of our healthcare system with its challenges and difficulties are driving many healthcare workers to burnout. And that's not just within the IHS, it's across the United States and probably a global issue as well. Um, our workers are at increased risk for mental health challenges and choosing to leave the health workforce uh, at a much earlier rate than expected. So the importance of um, learning more about burnout and resiliency is if this is not addressed, the health worker crisis will make it harder for patients to get care when they need it. Um, it causes health costs to rise, hinders our ability to prepare for the next public health emergency. And then of course it worsens um, the social determinants of health and, and all other um, health disparities. Next slide, please. So a little bit um, about understanding um, burnout. So the definition, um, there's multiple definitions out there, but I think the one that fits best is it's characterized by a high degree of emotional exhaustion and depersonalization uh, resulting in cynicism and a low sense of personal accomplishment at work. Um, symptoms can fall across multiple spectrums, including physical, psychological, and behavioral. And I think some of the most important um, aspects about burnout is actually being aware and recognizing when it's happening to yourself or any of your coworkers. Some of those symptoms are increased irritability, uh, withdrawal from coworkers, friends, and family, impaired judgment, um, you notice, notice Noticing um, any excessive alcohol or substance use, uh, the reduced ability to manage emotions and impulses, decreased personal hygiene, feeling drained, overwhelmed, and disconnected. Um, of course, there's that reduced sense of professional accomplishment and increased risk of health issues such as heart disease, um, high blood pressure, and or type 2 diabetes. So um, causes. Um, Especially in healthcare workplace systems, it's a range of societal, cultural, structural, and organizational factors, including excessive workloads, administrative burdens, limited say in scheduling, and lack of organizational support. So I just read a study recently where uh, for physicians alone, the demand is going to continue to grow faster than the supply, leading to a short shortage of physicians between 54,000 and 139,000 physicians by the year of 2033. And the gaps, as you're aware, are going to be most um, expected in primary care and rural communities. Uh, next slide, please. So the impact of burnout is extensive. It not only affects us as individuals, but has huge effects on our leaders and our organizations in these um, in these different ways: um, physical, emotional, professional, on organizations, you know, team performance, um, the care of the patients, and um, the efficiency of the organizations. Next slide. So resiliency in healthcare leadership. Um, again, there's a lot of um, different definitions, um, but I think this sums it up really good is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. So important factors include heightened confidence in one's abilities, 
disciplined routines, and social and family support. So characteristics of um, res resilient people include empathy, being able to adapt and improvise um, to differing uh, situations. And as you're all aware, those can sometimes change on a minute to minute basis um, in, in our in our in our workspaces. Um, being self aware and open to feedback is important. Um, taking calculated risks, having a positive attitude, um, being able to develop and um, foster the improvement in others, and then also um, effectively communicate with one another. So the benefits here, of course, as mentioned earlier, resiliency can mitigate burnout and improve uh, leadership effectiveness. Next paragraph, or excuse me, next slide. Uh, strategies to reduce burnout um, can cover a variety of areas. I think the most important for individuals is self-care, and that includes regular physical exercise and stretching, healthy diet, uh, sleep hygiene, relaxation, and of course, um, humor with laughter being the best medicine. And of course, it's really important for individuals if um, they are identifying any of those factors that or symptoms of burnout that they should follow up with their primary care provider um, just to make sure that nothing else is going on. And of course, um, professional support is very important. Um, and that includes uh, as any individual in the healthcare workforce um, seeking professional help and peer support. So, um, it's important to identify your stress triggers and uh, very important to evaluate mistakes uh, because we're all human, we're going to make mistakes, um, but we don't wanna continue making the same mistake over and over. And so in IHS, I think one of the most important programs we have is the EAP um, program, but also um, at the area office in the healthcare um, programs department, um, Carol Strassheim, our um, area diabetes coordinator, has introduced what she calls um, colleague care. And so she encourages all of us to reach out to um, people at the area office, people at the service units, and just check on them periodically to see how everybody's doing and if there's anything that they need help with. And so sometimes just venting to somebody else or having a trusted ear um, will help uh, reduce burnout. And of course, work-life balance is very important um, to maintain it. You know, there's several techniques to maintain a healthy work-life balance. Um, and as I stress to the employees that I supervise, um, you know, when you're on your tour of duty, um, we expect you to work very hard. Our patients deserve that. However, when you're off duty, Go enjoy yourself, go enjoy your family and get refreshed, recharged, um, because work will take a lot out of you and we need that um, off work time to rejuvenate ourselves. Um, there have also been um, suggestions of keeping a journal. I actually don't keep a personal journal, but I, I, I do keep a professional journal and it's more important uh, for me to keep a pro professional journal because then I can um, look back and quickly identify things that are important for reports uh, that we need to compile. You know, I mean, there's so many reports that we have to do, not only to the service units, but to other stakeholders, such as Rocky Mountain Tribal Leaders Council, the American Indian Health Leaders Organization, and just even up to... Um, congressman like senator tester so um, i keep a professional journal and it it really helps me identify um things that i am accomplishing when oftentimes there's so much work going on that you tend to forget and so i think that's a good way to help uh, reduce burnout as well and of course don't be afraid to ask for help so some other things that um, specifically that health workers can do is uh, learn to recognize the signs of distress, not only in yourself, but your coworkers. Um, understand and realize that there are many mental health challenges throughout the day and that burnout um, does occur. Um, and some days are much better and some days are much worse than others. So stay connected with your coworkers and don't be afraid again to reach out for help. Um, 
It's important. Uh, one thing that I was reading about in my research is to prioritize moments of joy and connection. And so you really got to celebrate um, the times of happiness and success, um, not only learning from our failures and mistakes, but really actually celebrating and um, living in that moment when there is um, happiness to be had and shared. Um, and of course, like we I mentioned earlier, get back to the basics with good health habits. And then obviously very important in our system is use your voice to advocate for positive changes in your workplace, in your learning environment, and of course, in the communities that we serve. And next slide, please. So some ways that we can um, build resiliency. Um, there's many, many, many different ways to do that. There's many, many different resources out there, mm -hmm. but I think these are three very important things in building resiliency, uh, emotional intelligence, leadership development, and team support. And here at the area office, uh, we've been learning more about this, and um, we will be sharing uh, what we're learning um, through not only these uh, lunch and learns, but uh, for other opportunities in the future, um, because we definitely want to build resiliency, and which um, obviously builds on our success. Next slide. So the organizational role um, also spreads across many different um, uh, disciplines um, from policies and programs, technology, in culture. So um, what healthcare organizations can do and what we're attempting to do is build a commitment to the health and safety of health workers and just make it a normal everyday expectation and put it into the fabric of our health organization. Uh, review and revise policies to ensure health workers are not deterred from seeking appropriate care for their physical health, mental health, and or substance use challenges. Increase access to high quality, confidential mental health and substance use care for all health workers. Uh, rebuild community and social connection among health workers, of course, to mitigate burnout and feelings of loneliness and isolation. Uh, it's also important to combat bias, racism, and discrimination in the workplace. As you all know, we, uh, IHS has a zero um, tolerance for any of that. And also, we want to invest in health prevention and social services to address all um, health inequities. So today, um, I just received an email with information that a a recent report by the Physicians Foundation shows that 60% of physicians and residents are still dealing with burnout. So if that's occurring to our um, clinical leaders, it's occurring across the spectrum of all healthcare workers. And I don't, it doesn't matter to me if you're, if you work in EVS or if you're the CEO, uh, you're still working in healthcare and um, burnout is a real problem. It all, that report also mentions, uh, despite initiatives to enhance wellness, many physicians are reluctant to seek mental health support due to stigma and potential career impacts. So the report actually calls for health and systems to improve work conditions uh, rather than just promoting resilience. It's how important it is. <laughs> all right. So my final slide uh, inclusion, uh, in conclusion, I just want to give you a little bit of a, a personal story about uh, my own experience with burnout and resiliency. Um, I was born at the Blackfeet Community Hospital, which is in the IHS system. I'm, my mother worked at IHS as a nurse, as many of you know. Um, and I remember when I was about four or five years old, uh, we had a barbecue at the house. And one of the IHS physicians came to that barbecue and he left such a lasting impression um, because he was fun. He was friendly. Um, I and, and, and I knew he was a doctor. And, and because of that, interaction. He was one of the inspirations for me to become a physician because I wanted to be like him. As I grew older and went through um, high school, undergraduate, medical school, residency, um, I finally learned about adverse childhood experiences and that um, 
in that study with the questionnaire. Um, if you haven't taken that questionnaire yet, I recommend that you do so, but also be very cautious while taking it because it can be a very triggering uh, event. The first time I took it, I, I felt so um, overwhelmed um, that I kind of felt physically sick. So as expected, being born to a single mother, being raised on the reservation and, and with uh, many, dif uh, many of those difficulties, I found out that I had a very high ACE score. However, I also took a resiliency um, questionnaire test and I scored very high on the resiliency test. And so I think that balance has really helped uh, me achieve uh, what I've been able to do coming off the reservation and going up on commodities and what have you. And so it, I don't need to highlight that about myself because I think a lot of healthcare workers um, have the potential to have high ACE scores just like myself. Um, and so it, so anybody in the healthcare, in the IHS healthcare workforce, um, can achieve you wouldn't you wouldn't be here where you're at if your resilience score wasn't high if if not higher than your ACE score um, so moving on um, I did receive the Indian Health Service scholarship and so I had a payback obligation and so right after residency I went to work at the Blackfeet Community Hospital and in the short four years that I was there working there was making me feel like I needed to get out of medicine because it wasn't it wasn't the type of medicine medical practice that I was expecting and so I paid back my obligation to the very day applied um, outside of IHS and got back out to I got out of IHS and got um, additional training and experiences that also helped with my resilience and Eventually, with with that experience outside of IHS, um, I was able to come back feeling refreshed because I did not feel like my four year payback time period was enough to pay back for everything that the scholarship had paid for in return. And so now uh, and that's why I'm back. Um, and hopefully. That will give you an idea that even people that are considered leaders in our organization do experience burnout as well. And so, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so, <laughs> so um, hopefully that's uh, a little helpful for you. Um, but anyway, in order to provide optimal, high quality, safe and reliable health care. I think it's very important for all of us to recognize and uh, prevent burnout by assessing, measuring and intervening when it does occur and then move towards healing from burnout as well. Because if you're not able to get away from that burnout, as you know, we've lost a lot of colleagues uh, in IHS. They've They've uh, resigned, retired, took jobs elsewhere. Um, that's going to keep happening, and so we need to we need to work on that. Um, and it's also important to build individual and organizational resilience. Um, it it's important to strengthen cultures, environment, and environments to be safer, more generous, and more just for all workers. Um, we need to seek input and involvement from workers to improve processes, workflows, and the overall culture of the health system. Um, and I think it's important for us to encourage ourselves, our coworkers, to take that leave. Um, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is when people have use or lose leave and they end up losing it. Um, that makes me lose it. <laughs> so make sure you take your leave take your rest breaks, um, have zero tolerance for any violence, discrimination, or any of that other uh, negativity. Um, one thing that we learned from the pandemic is to prior prioritize adequate PPE. That even in and of itself pre helps prevent uh, burnout. 
Um, I know some things that we've been working on in the past and continue to work um, towards is um, increasing flexibility in work schedules. That has also been shown to be a factor. And then, of course, um, even though we are the Indian Health Service, we employ people of all colors, creeds, what have you. And so it's very important in my mind to combat any bias, racism, and other forms of discrimination. And so that's all that I have for my uh, uh, brief overview of burnout and resiliency. I know we're a little bit ahead of schedule. I don't know if anybody has any questions, um, but I'm happy to entertain any. Oh, let's see. The attendees. the attendees. Okay. I don't see any questions in chat, Dr. Williamson. All right. Well, um, I appreciate each and every one of you um, online for joining and everybody here with me. And uh, if anybody does have any questions, concerns, or issues, please email me um, or text me, call me, whatever you need to do. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, everybody.